Welcome back, everyone, to Freaky Tales on this Tuesday evening. I want to thank everybody who's logged in, everybody who's commenting, everybody who liked, comment, subscribed, all of our new members. Like I said, for the month of October, I would be going live twice a week. So you can expect to see me again this Friday. So once again, those of you guys that are subscribed, if you guys have not hit that notification bell button on the subscribe, make sure you do that so that every time we go live, you will be notified. Every time we release content, you will be notified. Uh, once again, I want to thank everybody who became a member on our Freaky Tales podcast. Uh, we do have uh, uh, the Michael Myers house visit that uh, we shot. I will be re-loading uh, uh, some more content this week. Every week, I will be loading uh, content on the members only that will only be available to our members. So I want to thank everyone. We just opened up this membership thing. We have a little bit over 10 members. So I want to thank everyone who has become a member. And once again, every week we will be loading content for our members and only our members only. And I do want to clarify this again, that um, I received a DM on my Freaky Tales podcast on Instagram page. And they said, so are you going to start charging people for, uh, you know, to watch Freaky Tales? No. This is just exclusive content for our members, and that's all. Uh, if you want to become a member, that's fine. You could become a member for one month, two months, and then just, you know, not be a member after a while. But it's up to you. Thank you very much once again for those that have become members. Other than that, we are also live on Rumble, on Rumble. So make sure you guys check us out on that. So, uh, Alex, what is the page called on Rumble? Rumble. Tony Vision, just one word. Tony Vision on Rumble. If those of you guys that have Rumble accounts, you can also catch us there every time we go live. So with that being said, thank you guys uh, for that. And I will announce the membership at the end of the show as well. But I have a very special guest that um, I've known for quite some time. Um, and part of the reason why I'm bringing him is because uh, this guy is a big conspiracy guy. For, oh, definitely. For, yeah, most definitely. And definitely. Uh, But, <clears throat> you know, Vince... Uh, I know you as Vince. Some people may know you as Invincible because you're also an artist. Uh, can you give us a little bit of your, of your background? Like, what is it that you do? So, uh, aside from doing music, being a music artist, um, I, um, I have a, uh, used to run a strip club. Okay. So I ran a strip club for some time. Okay. Uh, that kind of led into the whole podcast thing. Okay. But pretty much music, strip club, uh, owning a photo studio that's kind of my background okay now as far as you know you running a strip club like for how long did you run do that for uh well i would say managing the strip club i was doing it for close to four years and then i started doing my own thing uh doing my own events out of my location and started doing so uh i don't know it's, i've been around it for quite some time i would say over over seven eight years okay and and like as far as the strip club for the people that have are um can see your um, Instagram tag on the screen. I don't know if we got the Instagram tags on the screen. Um, <clears throat> if not, we'll put it on the description where you guys can follow him. But what was it that got you started in the strip club? What was it that motivated you besides the women, I guess? Oh, besides the women. Uh, yes. Yeah, so it was really a friend of mine that hit me up out of the blue. He's like, yo, uh, I need somebody to help me run this club. 
I didn't have any experience, but I do have a lot of experience with the ladies. So um, that was kind of my thing. And he brought me in and we ended up, you know, kind of he showed me the ropes and pretty much got into it. And, man, we made that club crack. And then I kind of it, it was it was like, a uh, you know, people say you live like a rock star. Yes. Well, that's, that's basically what it was like. Really? Oh, definitely. Okay, okay. Um, <clears throat> I wanted to ask you because I believe your family background, you come from a very, if I can use this word, uh, religious family background? Yes, the, uh, Christian background. Yeah, Christian okay, background. Okay, now, did, did your family raise you in that, or is that something that they later on in life introduced you? Uh, can you kind of give us a little bit of that? Yeah, no, my grandmother... Uh, so I was kind of a grandma's boy. My grandma, I lived with my grandma pretty much all my life. So she, her, my uncles, very Christian. Okay. So kind of grew up around that. Um, yeah, I was taught to believe in the Christian religion. That was kind of my my upbringing. Okay. So now, talking to you, there's things that have changed now since uh, your, if you will, your religious upbringing um, what was it that made you, I guess, have a different point of view or see things a little bit differently? What, what was it that either motivated you or did you see something? Did somebody tell you something? Uh, did you start to study on your own and see things a little different? Can you kind of? Yes, it's sort of a long story, but I, yeah, I started studying on my own. And actually, I, I actually was going to church because I was like, you know, growing up, I had like different girls that I was kind of fooling around with. And uh, I started going to church kind of, and I had questions. Of course. And I had a friend who was like, oh, you can't can't ask questions because that's against God. Okay. So he he called a meeting with his pastor, and the pastor was like, yo, you got to get rid of that Bible you have. You got the old standard revised version Bible. You need to get, get a King James version Bible. Okay. And then that's when it kind of, and then being in the industry too, you it, it opened <clears throat> a can of worms. Okay. So I started learning about the King James Version Bible and then the Old Standard Revised Version Bible. And still, no pastor could answer my questions. And okay. that led me to kind of open the doors of learning about symbols and different things like that. Okay. Now, now being in the industry, you said that um, you started seeing things, then you started questioning them, and then if you, if I, I correct me if I'm, if you were quote, quoting you correctly, I believe you said you began to look stuff up or you began to find stuff up, whether it was symbolism. And somehow we ended up in our conversation the other day with the subject of reptilians. Oh, yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, so you know what I think kind of kicked that off is I came across something. Uh, I don't know if you guys are familiar with like Inky. No. Okay, it's like so, so supposedly Inky is the one that created this reality. Supposedly, right? Okay. So if you want to say he's God or whatever you want to say, he's basically the one that created the the, the simulation here. Okay. Inky's supposed to be like the mad scientist that created, supposedly. Right. Um, but I was in Hollywood. I was at a, a red carpet event. And um, I remember at the Kodak Theater, like, you know, where they have that, they had a big old, and I took a photo because they, they switched it now. But I remember going there and they had, they had a big old Inky picture, like on the, it was giant, like on the, um, it was just a big old symbol on the wall, like right okay. when you're in the Kodak Theater. I'm like, why would they have that there? You know what I yeah. mean? So that kind of raised like, uh, just w raised questions in my head because I'm like, we're doing a red carpet event. They do a lot of big events here, and then they got Inky there. So mm. then I look across. I'm like on a balcony. I'm looking across, and I see the Jimmy Kimmel show. And it's like, I see another symbol, and I'm like, okay, what is, it's, it's shot in a Masonic temple. So then I'm like, damn, that's weird. It's shot in a Masonic temple. You got the stars below, and then you got a big old thing of inky right here. So then it just, it kind of just made me explore more into uh, symbolism. And see, I mean, there's so many symbols. You know, now, do you believe that, that uh, I guess, uh, symbols do mean something? Like, because a lot of times we see certain things, yeah. and we may not know, like, oh, maybe that's just a V. Or an upside down cross, and maybe it doesn't mean anything. Or, mm -hmm. but you're you're saying that a lot of these symbols do mean something. Oh, definitely. Like even the hospital, uh, the hospitals, um, they have the what is it? What do you call it? the caduceus? I don't know if I'm saying it correctly, but it's the snakes wrapped around. So you look at some of the symbolism with with the snakes wrapped. Like there's symbols everywhere, but people don't understand what 
what they are, like the hospitals, they got the Shriners. If you know what a Shriner is, and you, you know, there's symbols. They tell you clues everywhere, not only from what you see outside, but in movies and all that stuff. Right. So, so would you say that after looking into it, all that, seeing all these symbols, uh, did it, it did it cause you to question your, I guess your beliefs that your grandparents or your family had instilled in you? Yeah, it, it did. You know what I mean? We still kind of have, I, I kind of got into uh, searching more and asking more questions, and I became kind of a problem. Okay. <laughs> but it was kind of cool. It, now I'm kind of cool with whatever people believe, but yeah, it did. You know, they, they would tell me, oh, you don't question or certain things, but I'm like, man, as far as the reptilians, there's symbolism even in like the Vatican stuff. You looked up yeah. the, the Vatican churches, like they got reptile symbols different things and i did a little research as far as like uh with david ike now i don't know how much he's legit but he talks a lot about the whole reptilian thing and who was this david ike david ike i've never heard of him so yeah. you guys can definitely uh, look him up now as far as um uh, symbolism um is, is there good symbols and bad symbols or should i say evil symbols oh yeah definitely like uh Think about it. There's symbols everywhere. The yin, the yang. There's numbers. Some people believe in numerology, um, astrology. Uh, yeah, there's, there's symbols pretty much everywhere. Okay. You know, b because you know what, like for, for an example, you could look at the Baphomet mm -hmm. and some people may not know. They just say, oh, it's a goat. Yeah. But it's, it's, it's a symbolism. It's symbolic to the satanic church. Yeah. Okay. And <clears throat> there's a symbol, like for an example, not saying that there's anything wrong with this, but like the Star of David. Yeah. You know, that was used, or that's to identify a, a Jewish nation. Mm -hmm. Okay. So there, you're saying that there are symbols everywhere. It's just a lot of people just don't pay attention to them. Yeah. You know what they were saying? I was watching an interview. With, there's a guy named Bobby Hammett. So for anybody, like he talks about a lot of stuff. But uh, he was like, man, people are too lazy to really research stuff. Very true. They're just kind of taught something, and they just go with the flow. So like me, I'm like my family. They say they're Christians, but they never even read the Bible. They don't even, never done research or why they believe believe in that, where that comes from. And so they're kind of in a, I always like to say this, like a, they're in a fishbowl mentality. Uh -huh. And I'm saying, you got a question, you know, I'm cool with whatever you believe in. I'm not trying to force you to believe in something new, but always question why you believe in something. Of course, of course. No, and and, and I, I know exactly what you mean. Now, as far as questions that you had for the pastors or for your family and you didn't get no answers and other than just telling you, you know what, uh, you can't question. Do you still remember any of those questions that you might have had? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was uh, speaking in tongues because uh -huh. I was going to apostolic church. Okay. My friend was like, he he and I, he invited me. I'm like, yeah, let's go. So I was like, it's pretty cool. So uh -huh. they started speaking in tongues. And... um I don't even know how it came about, man. I, I came across this pastor that was talking about, like, speaking in tongues is not in, in Corinthians. I, now, it's been years since we, we got into this, but, I mean, I'm pretty sure if I was a research, I can come across it. But he talked about, like, <clears throat> speaking in tongues is uh, for your own edification. So it's only for your, you have to be able to translate it to somebody that doesn't know how to speak in tongues, because if not, they'll think you're crazy. There's a lot of people that do think, that people that do speak in tongues are crazy. Yeah, right. So that big topic <clears throat> came, that was what I had a question because in the apostolic church, they were teaching speaking in tongues. Uh -huh. So I brought it up to my friend and he was like, yo, we got to sit down with a pastor and talk about this. And then that pastor was like, no, you can't be questioning that. That That is wrong. That old standard revised ver version Bible, get rid of that, get a King James. And I'm like, well, then I started doing research on who created the King James version. So yeah, it was, it was a lot of stuff. Okay, okay. Now, now, as far as, and we'll come back to the symbolism, but as far as that, uh, the reptilian stuff, what made you a believer in that? Uh, it wasn't not necessarily David Icke, but that kind of that kind of raised the question. But then, like, seeing the Vatican stuff, um, and then hearing stories, there was even a, a, a story. Uh, now, I don't know how accurate or how true this is, but there was something on TikTok, because I know TikTok does have a lot of boot crap, but there was something on there where they, were, they found in Chicago. They found like an underground city and hmm. supposedly the reptilians live underground <clears throat> in, in these cities. And if you notice, like even in downtown LA, they have an underground city. Then there's a story about a Hopi Indian that actually, um, he was digging. I think he was like working or something and they were digging 
and he ended up finding like a underground city. So supposedly these reptile reptilians yes. live in these underground cities. Now, no, what, what this maybe this is the question I should ask. Are you convinced that these reptilians are real? I believe there's different entities out there, especially working in the industry. Uh-huh. Yeah, I definitely think there's uh <clears throat> Yeah, because you got to think about it. It's like you meet people that in the industry that just I don't know, man, they have like a different vibe, different way of thinking. It's like almost some people don't even have a conscience on, on some of the things on yeah. who they are. No, no, I understand what you mean by that. Now, let me ask you this. Have you ever seen a reptilian? No. Okay. Now, what is a reptilian? Uh, from what I've heard, and maybe you can correct me, or maybe mm-hmm. you can even add on or elaborate a little bit more. Some people say that it's actually, I guess, like a lizard type of human, and it could transform itself into a lizard and then back to a human. Yeah, like they say they're shapeshifters, right? Shapeshifters, and then, and then yes. they said they've caught them like on the news, they're kind of their eyes uh-huh. and their tongue. So, they, I mean, there's a lot of stuff on the Internet that shows even on just people kind of shapeshifting or kind of, <clears throat> kind of altering their their human form, I guess uh-huh. you could say. Um, but, yeah, that's that's pretty much what, do, from what I know of. Do you believe that that's possible, that, that they that, can? That there's some... Man, um, you know what? I'm gonna go ahead and say, yeah, I do believe there's there's different entities here. Yeah. What about as far as the stuff that you've heard, as far as underground cities? Do you believe that that does exist? Yeah, and and I'll tell you why. Because even where I had a studio in in downtown San Bernardino, and it's and it's kind of vacant area, and even there had a downtown area. It had an underground area. So I'm like, all right, there's <coughs> underground uh, spaces here, and there's, there's in LA. It's known fact that there's underground. It's like an underground tunnels and cities and sh- stuff like that. Yeah. Really? Wow. Okay. See, and this is on you to me because I've heard about it, but mm-hmm. I will say this: me, <coughs> excuse me, me being a skeptic, uh, and I'm gonna be one hundred percent with you. Me being a skeptic, it's very hard for me because I'm one of these guys that I need proof. You yeah. Know, I f- I, like I really need proof. You know. Um, I remember before we started this uh, Freaky Dose podcast, me and my brother were going to call it the skeptic and the optimist. Mm. Okay. I was going to be the skeptic. He was going to be the optimist. The thing was that we wanted to talk, we wanted to base it more on the paranormal. And that was kind of more of a broad name. And we could have talked about anything. I wanted to keep it more paranormal, you know? Yeah, I feel you. So, so you do believe that there are entities or if you want to call them aliens or, but what, if you had to, whatever research you have done or whatever you have heard, where do these reptilians come from and have they been here for like yeah, years? Yeah, like there's, okay, look, you know how there could be a flat earther or there could be different people that believe in whatever they may believe right. in, right? Like they say that there's so many conspiracies, man. It's like once you start digging, it just goes deeper and deeper to even the flat earth theory, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So you can get into that debate. You can get into whatever debate you want to get into, but I think there's some truth in everything that you may believe in. Right. You know, um, now l- let me just ask you this before we, we, we um, cause eventually we're going to put out the phone lines and I would like everybody to be a part of the show. So when you call in, make sure you want to talk about symbolism. Maybe you have, uh, you study symbols. Maybe you, uh, um, have a question about symbolism or maybe you have a question about reptilians, you know, or maybe you do believe in them. Maybe you have seen something. Maybe you have been or seen an underground city. I would like for you to call in and be a part of the show and let us know what you guys think. We're just having a conversation. We want to open up, uh, uh, open up the phone lines eventually soon and have you guys call and be a part of the show. And, or, you know, we're just, we just want to have a conversation and have you guys call in and share what you guys think. Now, As far as reptilians, I'll be honest with you. I, I heard about re- reptilians maybe about two years ago. Other than that, never heard of. Them. Never heard. I never even heard of underground cities. Yeah. Um, I've never. I, I was somewhat familiar with symbols. Uh-huh. One movie that actually intrigued me, and it talks a lot about symbols, is that movie. Um, um, uh, what was it uh, with Tom Hanks in it? Tom Hanks. It wasn't it. Angels and Demons, or oh yeah, 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 yeah. I didn't see that, but I do know I like. Yeah. Or the Da Vinci Code, the, the first da Vinci one. Code, okay. Yeah. Had a lot to do with symbols. Yeah. I, I really, really enjoyed that those movies, uh-huh. only because it had to do with symbolism. 
you know. So there is a lot of symbols. Like a lot of people may recognize the the, the Mason symbol. Oh yeah, and see, there's different things of the Mason symbol, right? Got, mm-hmm. Like I said, you got the Prince Hall, you got the the, the Shriners. You, so there's different, and these organizations, some of them, the high, the Shriners own majority of the hospitals are the hospitals. So mm. a lot of people may not know that, you know? So, right. I mean, yeah, I mean, I mean, the, the, the knowledge is, the wisdom is out there. And, and what do they say in, in masonry that you got to ask one to be one, right? So if you want the knowledge, it's there for you to get it. Now, as far as these reptilians, from what you know of, are they hostile? No, but, uh, from, from my understanding is that they feed off a of negative energy. Mm. So you, if you notice, like, ne- negativity, um, that's what they feed off of, fear, uh, things like that. Wow, I, I, you're educating me on this because, like I said, I've never even looked into it because, like I said, I might have heard of reptilians maybe like two years ago, mm-hmm. you know. And, and, and for, for you guys that are watching, you know, whether you believe in reptilians or with, whether you, you know, are familiar or know anything about the underground cities, uh, please let us know. You know, call in and let let us know. If not, just call in and share one of your freaky tales. That's why we call the show Freaky Tales, where we allow you to be a part of the show and uh, to call in and share. Now, <clears throat> do you think? And I'm only asking because I'm trying to come as a Freaky Tales fan and ask these questions to you. Do you believe that these will ever see them? Do you think they'll be more visible to us eventually? Or do you think they just like being hidden? Uh, I think, I think, yeah, I think, um, you know how like now we're kind of, there's a lot of uh, things about aliens and this yes. and that, right? And then there's always been rumors about like alien greys and different species that are out there. So I think the more as things maybe come, I th- the years come, I think over time we might be seeing some some interesting things here. You know, and, and the thing is, okay, I'm going to refer to these reptilians as aliens, if you will, mm-hmm. only because recently the government has been saying within the last year or two, we're going to release footage now that yeah. there's something out there. So my question is, why now? If you that's, can take that, a guess. That, you know what, that's a good question. Why now? It's it kind of, uh, maybe because technology, I think there's so much, mm-hmm. maybe eventually we're going to, we're gonna the technology so advanced that you're gonna bound to see something, right? Yeah, yeah. Now, um, my whole thing is this, and I've said it before on on the podcast that I truly do believe that um, we are gonna see somewhat of an alien invasion. I, I believe at least in my time. So you believe that, okay? I, I do believe that we're gonna see alien invasion, but I'm gonna say it this way: I do believe it's gonna be a, a government alien invasion. I don't believe it's. I don't believe in little green men that are gonna come down. Yeah. You know, so um, I believe it's going to be like a, um, um, it's going to be fixed, you know what I'm saying? To strike fear into the heart of man, you know, mm-hmm. how else do you control them but by fear? And if you think about this, you come from a very religious background, and I'm not saying to you, but for people that are watching, you know how you get them to throw their faith out the window? Mm-hmm. Have something come land in their front door. That's true, yeah. You, you see, yeah, see what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. You, you, you're you not going to call the cops. Who are you going to call? That's true, yeah. You know, everybody, can you imagine something walks through your door and says, we put you guys here? Yeah, you know what? I, I do believe that. Well, they they say that's a, um, the, the MK Ultra stuff. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, yeah. So that that's a, definitely um, could be programming, you know what I mean, kind of brain. But I, I feel like they've brainwashed us through everything, through music, through everything we, we think is cool or whatever. There's a lot of brainwashing going on. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, there's people, I believe, that are so, so uh, involved. So they believe this this whole alien thing, reptilian thing. Mm-hmm. You know that. Who's to say that the government may not just say, okay, we're gonna give it to you. Yeah, that's true. We're gonna give it to you, but you may not like the way it's gonna come to you. Mm-hmm. You know, and maybe they do come hostile. Or maybe they do come to instill fear in you, uh, like they were saying in Las Vegas. Something landed in somebody's backyard. Oh yeah, the alien thing. Yeah, yeah. you know, like, and again, why all of a sudden now? You know, it, everything coming out. You know what though? But there was things that were back in the day. There was people would supposedly see things, right? But like I'm saying, I think the technology is so advanced now. It's like you're bound to see something, right? Right. I mean, there's like we were me and you were talking. There's conspiracies literally about any subject. You can, any subject. Yeah. Yeah. There's like a conspiracy 
shit about the Titanic. There's conspiracy about gnomes. There's there's just anything you research, you're going to find something on. Yeah, yeah. Have you ever met anybody that has seen either an underground city or a reptilian? Do you know anyone? Or, or have you did your research where somebody has said, I've seen one? Uh, as far as, no, you know what? I just, the reptilian thing, that was a... Uh, that was something that was kind of new for me a few years back as well because I had a friend, he was talking about it. He got into that dude, David Icke. That okay. He was always talking about it. So, um, but as far as like the underground city stuff, um, I know LA definitely it has some some stuff. And like I said, it, and me being in San Bernardino, uh, having a studio there, they had a whole downstairs. Like it was literally big as went for miles down there. So I yeah. know there's, I don't know what, was there before or what was, you know, I, I really don't know. You know, you said you were in the strip club business. I don't know if you still are. Mm-hmm. But when you were there, <clears throat> this may seem a little off, but I have to ask. Because a lot of times I get people that DM me and say, you should have yeah. asked this. You should have dug a little bit deeper. Yeah. So I'm trying to. In the strip club industry, when you're in the club, you have usually it's very dim. Yeah, definitely. Some people come in drunk because they don't want to buy liquor, or some people buy liquor and they get drunk there. Sometimes some people come in drugged up, okay? Mm-hmm. Uh, you know the atmosphere probably better than anybody, better than me, okay? Um, my question to you is, in the strip club, has there ever been anything happen that you can say, that's unexplainable, anything paranormal? Yeah, yeah, because I used to close late at night, so I would be the only one there. So okay. I might have a dancer chilling with me. You know, I used to have one of the dancers help me count money or whatever at the end of the night. Yes. So I was locking up. So I'm the only one there. Everybody's gone. Okay. And you maybe three thirty, four in the morning, mm-hmm. and you would always hear noises. So I don't know if that <clears throat> particular strip club was actually haunted. I've heard rumors. Uh-huh. And there's been a lot of crazy stuff that has happened there when I wasn't there. And as me working there, I've seen a lot of stuff happen. Yeah. So you got you to gotta remember there's... Is there one possibly experience or one particular story that maybe a stripper might have told you, a bartender, or maybe even a, a paying customer? The, there's actually uh, people that said uh, there was a janitor that we had. He worked there for over 20 years, I believe. And he said he would always hear noises. Uh, now, I believe somebody somebody did get hurt there. I don't have 100% facts on that. But I know there was a lot of people that, that there was a lot of fights, a lot of yeah. things that happened. Now, me, I would always hear noises. Now, I don't know what those noises were. I would hear things falling. We had a kitchen, so sometimes a plate would fall. Uh, it would sound like a door was slamming. I'm like, what the hell is that? It was just un- things that were unexplainable. Yeah, very unexplainable. Okay, now. Just put it this way. I didn't, <clears throat> I'm going to keep it real. I didn't have, I would have the lights on. Because it was, it was it's yeah. a pretty big, sp- and it, it was a little bit like dancers would say, oh, when I worked at that club, it was always creepy. So right. it, it felt like a creepy, creepy feeling. Right, because you had mentioned that the uh, the reptilians, from what you know of, that they feed off of uh, uh, negative energy or, negative or, energy or fear. Okay, at these type of clubs, the reason why I ask this question is because at these type of clubs, when you have a lot of negative energy, people go there to have a good time. People go there to see the chicks. People want, they, they want to kind of get away from reality a mm-hmm. little bit. So they go there and enjoy themselves, okay? But many times, there's fights that have been broken up there. There's been uh, uh, altercations. There's been arguments. And if I may, and I hope I don't step out of line, you actually even told me that you actually were even stabbed yeah, I got stabbed in my head. I got the scars to prove it. So it's okay, can you kind of walk us to what happened? Yeah. Um, and you know what? So we we uh, what happened was I, it was we had a, bi- a biker crew come in there, and um, one of the I was actually outside. So I'm you know every once in a while as a manager I would come outside, kind of chill, and I would kind of just observe things that were happening. Yeah, yeah. So a group of guys came in, and one of the guys was trying to bring in his knife. I said, bro, you can't do that. He tried to have some whole penal code oh, on section. This, this, this says I can carry a weapon. I said, bro, you're not carrying that here. Put that in the car. You got a big knife? Yeah. So the security <clears throat> guard, I believe, took it away from him. Okay. So these guys, I could tell that you, it's weird. Like you sense in a strip club, you sense energy like right away. You know who's bad, who needs, who you want out of there right so, away. So you do believe that 
people do. There are some people that do carry negative energy. Oh, Oh, one hundred. And you can feel it when you meet people, man. You already feel a certain energy, and sometimes you gotta just when somebody starts talking. When you start talking to somebody, you might identify them right away. Their energy, if it's good, bad, you know, you 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 get okay. it. But these guys came in there a little hostile, and they might have been drinking already. Um, so they're smacking the girls' booties and stuff like that. And I'm like. Usually when that happens, I have to tell them, like, bro, you got to chill out on that. You can't be doing that. Um, so it was the end of the night. They're getting out. Luckily, there was no fight with them in the club with anybody else. And uh, they bang on the door. I close the doors and they bang. Someone's banging on the door. I open the door. Who was it? The group of guys. I, I'm open. Barely open. Cracked. I'm like, what's up, guys? Like, yeah, your security has our knife. How, but how many guys were there? Uh, six. Okay. They're like, yeah, your security guard has our knife. So I'm like, all right, let me tell them to go give it to you. So I tell them, hey, man, they're, they're, you know, saying you got their knife. He's like, nah, I don't even know what they're talking about. Did, did he have it though or no? I'm not even sure. You know okay. that? I'm not sure. So he's like, let me go talk to him. <clears throat> yeah. So as soon as he opens the door, for some reason, the security guard, um, I don't know if he said something to him or something. It just, it, it, it started cracking right there and then. Right wow. when he opened the door, I don't know what was said. They start trying to jump him. I jump in. And, uh, man, I just remember I just felt some punches, and I was like, damn, these guys hit pretty hard. God damn. You know what I mean? Yeah. And uh, I was leaking all over the place. And so, yeah, man, that's kind of so what So did somebody tell you, hey, bro, I think no, he stabbed no, I you? No, I didn't even know. I didn't, I didn't feel it. You know how you, your adrenaline is going, so you don't really right. know. What happened is there was customers that jumped in and kind of broke it up. Oh, and, But we're yeah. still, like, fighting and stuff. And, uh, and then after, that's when I knew. Well, actually, the security was, he was stabbed way more than me. So he was, like, leaking even worse than me. We had to rush him to the hospital. And Wow. Uh, yeah. and, and that's what I was talking about, you know, the negative energy that's built up there in a place like that. Yeah. You know, that's why I'm asking. With so much negative energy going on, you know, did you witness anything? But you say uh, just a lot of, like, a lot of A lot of noises. But you got to remember, yeah, there's, hey, there's weird customers that go in there too, man, with just, because you got to think about it. Like, if you do your research on alcohol, right? Like, you ever think about why they, uh, they're called wine and spirits? You got to get your wine and spirit license. Because I've been, you know, look, so you're putting spirits into your body, bro. That's why, like, people don't act, when they're all drunk, they act, they're like a 360 on you. And there, it, you would see people going crazy in there, acting wild, like like little kids in there, running wild. Oh, yeah. These are grown grown men, and I felt like I was babysitting them in, in, in a strip club. Yeah, yeah, okay. Wow, okay. You know, um, it's very interesting. Oh, no, there's a whole lot of interesting stories in there, man. So you, well, you meet a whole whole wide range of people. Well, you know what, man? Like I said, if you want to share, go ahead and share. But uh, there was another thing that you had mentioned that I, I wanted to bring up. Something about you working for a military base. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was working at, um, man, that's another one of my crazy jobs, man. So, I, um, yeah, I was working at a, a, a base called Fort Hunter Leggett. And okay. it was like kind of mid-Central Coast, California. Okay. What, what were you doing there? Like, like, how did you get that job? Um, So I started working. It was actually a... Uh, a relative that was in the military and said, Hey, they, they need people to help the military like train and stuff. So you would be working with them, uh, as an independent contractor. Okay. So I started doing like, um, we started making like artificial bombs and stuff and artificial. Yeah. Like they were, they were just made for the scenario. Okay. So okay. they're there. We, we were called the special effects crew. So they were made for like a scenario that we kind of make a, uh, the scenario seem as real as possible. For the new soldiers that are right. going out to Afghanistan. So uh, that base, if you look up Fort Hunter Leggett, like that base is known to be haunted. Really? Yeah. So one night I'm sleeping. We slept in tents outside, like in the middle of nowhere. So I'm sleeping in the, you know, we're all in a bunch of cots, like a whole group of people are on their own cots. It's like four in the morning. Right. Uh, a friend of mine, he had, earlier that day, he had asked me to go to, uh, to a bar with, with him on base. Like, okay. hey, you want to go to the bar? And um, I, I passed. I said, I'm going to just call it, call it a night. So I happened to wake up like at 4 in the morning, man, because I heard some noises. And I seen this. It looked like a, a, like a soldier, like, but it was like a hologram go through the door. I'm like, what the hell? I, I thought I was tripping. I thought I was like half asleep or yeah. something. So I'm like, maybe I'm tripping. This, this, this ain't real. 
And then I was like into my whole meditations and back. That was when I was first getting into it. And I'm like, man, maybe I'm just going way off the rocker or something. And he took off his hat and he like looked around, put it back on and walked out. And I was like, hold on. Did I just see that? Like, that's, that's not, that couldn't have happened. Did it look like, a, was it a human? Yeah, it was a, it was a dude like with a hat, took off his hat, put it on, turn. So now I'm tripping out. I'm like, I'm tripping. Nah, I'm like, maybe that's like some schizophrenia. I'm like, nah, that's, that's crazy. So I didn't tell nobody the next day, right. My buddy that asked me to go to the bar with him. He's like, yo, uh, man, you should have came with me to the bar, man. I, I got free drinks all night. He said the, the waitress, I mean, the waitress said, uh, that she hears noises and then the bartender didn't want to be alone. So the bartender said, if you stay with me and let me clean up whatever, I'll give you free drinks on the house. He okay. said, I have free drinks. So she hears no stuff on So night. she was pretty much scared to be up there alone. Yes. So then uh, later that night, we, we would take these like <clears throat> shuttle buses all over the place. Or we, so I'm taking this shuttle bus and there's a, a the bus driver. She's telling me like, she says, oh, um, he said one night, I never believed my, my sister. She was working on base. She was a. Uh, she seen this this army guy with with a hat, and you know it looked like a, it was a ghost or something. She says I never believed her, and so I was working here one night doing the bus drives, and I seen this guy. He had a hat and everything. It's kind of similar to my story, right? And she says, "Yeah." So the story is this dude died in the field right here where the tents were, where I was kind of where we were sleeping at. Yeah, he died right here of de- dehydration, so he died right there. So now that he wears a hat and. That's like the story on Fort Hunter Leggett. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Okay. So, yeah, I thought I was tripping. I was like, nah, this cannot be real. I'm tripping. But I thought I was tripping. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Now, now, uh, before we open up the phone lines, there was another thing that I wanted to bring up. Okay. So, we talked a little bit about, uh, um, and I'm trying to keep it to a minimum because I, I want a lot of the callers to call in. Yeah, 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 definitely. Uh, so, we talked about Underground City. So, once again, if you guys believe in Underground Cities or seen an Underground City or know information about Underground Cities, please Call in and let us know if you know anything about reptilians. Uh, we want to open it up and have a discussion and see, you know, uh, maybe if anybody has seen it or if you're a reptilian and you want to call in, you know, uh, you feel free to call in. But I also we talked about paranormal. We talked about noises, uh, bad energy. But there's something that you told me the other day that I, I want to bring up. You believe kind of like what you said, that movie with Jim Carrey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the Truman oh, Show. The, the Truman Show. Yeah. You believe that we live in something like that? No, definitely. Now, now see, here's my thing, because it, just like you wanted answers, like, from a, a church pastor, mm-hmm. you know, at least you wanted to question them. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, What led you to believe? What did you see? What did you hear? What did you read? Or who do you know that taught you these things? Uh, j- just just research. Mag, you know what, what I would trip? Like, you ever, like, try to talk to somebody, and they just... It's weird. It's like they just don't, and it doesn't, your words would never resonate with them. Right, right. It's almost like, and I started thinking, these people don't get it. Like, you try to talk to them, and it just doesn't resonate. Like, there's no, over the, yeah. it's no understanding. It's almost like they're like an NPC, or if they want, that's kind of the new phrase that everybody's coming out with, the NPC, right? But then I started watching movies, and I'm like, hold up, like on Jumanji, the new one. Yeah. Where Kevin Hart, he's talking to the dude, because he's like part of a program to keep you in this program. So he, on Jumanji, he's talking to him, and then as he dies and he comes back to the life, because he got to level up, right? So he right. keeps coming back. Then he realizes he's talking to the tour guy. He realizes that that dude is an NPC. He's just, it's, he's this program that's just to keep you at that level. Mm. But he looks real like me and you. You know what I mean? So um, it was just like little things, little hints, and then you just kind of meet people, and then you kind of just, there's like, there's, like, even numbers, man, you might see something, or just like what me and Homeboy were talking about yesterday. Like, he was bumping a song, and then I get in the car with my little brother, and he's bumping the same song. I'm like, hold up, what the hell? Like, this is... Okay. Things just kind of become in sync. Do, do you believe that a flat earth is possible? A flat earth? Wow. I mean, that's that's the... So, my beliefs are a little bit different, but I do believe in the flat earth theory because I've done a lot of research... There's a guy named, uh, I always get his mixed with Donald Burr. I don't know if you know who that musician is. No. Okay, well, his, day, his name is uh, uh, Admiral Bird. And Admiral Bird, there's actually video footage of him saying that he, I think it was uh, Operation, I'm not sure if it was Paperclip or Fishbowl, it was one of those. 
but he talks about uh, going out over the uh, ice wall and all that stuff. Really? Yeah. Okay. Do you believe that there's a firmament that we cannot leave? There's a dome. Well, they say that because, like, <clears> if you ever <throat> notice the rockets, they don't ever, like, it, it kind of curves or the rainbow. Uh, 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 yeah. I've never seen them. Yeah, so they, you know what? So as far as, like, getting into the, the scientific evidence of, of that stuff, now, I'm not no scientist, and I can't right. get into the very specifics, but doing your research, it will make you think. And if you know about the masonry symbols, uh, kind of might l- let you if you know about it, it might okay. Okay. lead you to believe. Alex, I'm going to go ahead. Oh, interesting enough, I'm going to go ahead and um, get connected to the uh, roadcaster. And we're going to go ahead and start. Uh, put up the number, please. Let me know when I'm connected. Okay, cool. I'm connected. So we want to go ahead and open up the phone lines for everybody that wants to call in, everybody that wants to, <coughs> excuse me, wants to chime in on what we've been talking about, whether it's underground cities whether it's reptilians or whether it's symbolism or whether it's uh, just p- paranormal, or maybe you don't really know anything about this, but you just want to call in to ask a little bit more or share a story. Feel free. Uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, put up the phone numbers. the phone number up? Okay, the phone number's up. L- yeah, let's go ahead and put these phones on. And um, let's um, start our discussion with you fans. Call in and... Uh, Share with us your freaky tales or your freaky questions, and <clears throat> we'll take it from there. Okay, let me see. Caller, call back. Here we go. Caller, your name, and where are you calling from? Yo, what up, Tony? It's what? Jose from Yuma, Arizona. How you doing, Jose from Yuma? What's, what's, what's good, brother? You good, going man. Good, good, good. <laughs> So, uh, so um, th- this is my my friend right here, Vince. Yo, what up? oh, what's up, man? What up, hey, man? man? Really cool, um, really cool uh, topic today, guys. Thank you. Um, I wanted to touch up a little bit on 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 the simulation and all that stuff. Okay. So, do you guys believe? Okay, so when you sleep, right? Yeah. And some people go into a deep sleep, and they don't. For instance, look, check it out. I smoke weed. Mm-hmm. And it's kind of weird that I don't remember my dreams sometimes. And actually, I don't even remember my dreams. Like, I don't know, like, sometimes I feel like I just can't remember a dream. Yeah. What do you guys think that is? She can't remember a dream? That I mean, that happens all the time. Or also, like, like, vivid dreams. Like, like, vivid dreams, too. Like, that's crazy. Like, when you stop smoking weed, you see all these vivid-ass dreams. Like, like lucid dreaming? You ever... Yeah, like like lucid dreams, like mm-hmm. real, like crazy, like real realistic dreams, you know? Well, and people that don't smoke or do anything and they dream, they dream about, like, let's say, oh, you know what, so-and-so, boom, crashed their car, right? And then it happens, like, sometimes, you know? So you're saying, like, that you kind of manifest that in, in a dream... I mean, you you have a dream, and then yeah. it kind of manifests in in this reality. Hmm. Yeah, like what do you what do you guys think about the the, the dreams and all that stuff? And I'm being never a dream under marijuana and stuff like that. Yeah, because uh, I'm not the only one. Okay, well, uh, I mean, uh, there's, there's, there's people. But you know, let, let yeah, me try to I'm answer right. what I think you're you're asking. Um, I never mm-hmm. smoke, bro. I never tried coke. I never smoke cigarettes, or uh-huh. I, but I do drink. Okay. Uh, one thing I will say that I dream every night, and I remember my dreams. Sometimes I remember my dreams. I wake up and I know I dreamt, but I can't remember it. I could be at the gym a few hours later, and it all comes back to me. Yeah, that's happened to me. So, so there's yeah. times that oh. now, but I do believe that dreams. I'm not going to say all of them. Some people believe that all dreams have mm-hmm. an interpretation. I only believe a few throughout my life. I've had, that I can count with one hand, several dreams that I dreamt, and the very next day it happened. Mm. That's that's a possibility. You you ever, you know, what a big question is that people ask me all the time is they're like, all right, they, you know, sleep paralysis? Yeah. They're like, all right, what is sleep paralysis? They say, this feels like a demon. I said, well. Yeah, that one too. Yeah, I was like, all right, if you, if you know about uh, lucid dreaming, right? Yes. It's actually, so when we go to sleep, we leave our body. Mm. Right. So basically the sleep paralysis is, is really you're waking up and you're outside of your body. So you can't get up out of your body and then you start freaking out because it feels like something is holding you down. But you're really lucid dreaming in that lucid state of uh, sleep. 
So okay. you're out of your body at that that present time. Mm-hmm. That's the first time I've actually heard it like that. Yes. So I'm glad you shine light on that. Wow. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, wow, caller. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, that's... yeah, thank you, caller, man. I greatly well, yeah, appreciate it. I just wanted to touch up on that, about the dreams, you know, because yeah. it, 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 it is weird. Like, how does your body, like, you know, you sleep and you don't know what happens during that sleep. Like, like you said, your body just goes into a different dimension, I guess, rather. Yeah. I don't know, it's weird. But, yeah. um, yeah, man. Thank you guys for, for the show today. Appreciate thank, it. Thank you. See you Friday. <clears throat> okay, let's keep it pushing. We're going to go live again Friday. Um, so once again, I want to thank everybody for being a part of the show. Make sure you guys tap in. Make sure you guys call in. Make sure you guys call in and share your freaky tales or at least uh, call in and chime in and ask us a question pertaining to the subjects or maybe it's something else. Maybe you got something else on your mind. But uh, this is the part of the show, once again, where we allow you to call in and share with us. So here we go. Call in your name and where are you calling from? Hey, what's up, man? My name's uh, Ed. Uh, you sound very, very muffled, my bro. Uh, hold on, let me uh, let me let me try to figure something out. <clears throat> Did I was Ed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, 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 the first time I, I, I popped through, bro, I've been trying to call on multiple times, but I just wanted to stick to the subject because I'm, I'm, I'm at work, bro. I'm on a break, so I wanted to see what, that way I'm not uh, touching on a subject that's not related. Okay. Go for it. Uh, well, I guess um, uh, since it's freaky tales, I'll, I'll just give something that I've been trying to say for, uh, for a long time. You know, I know to each his own. Um, everybody could, uh, respect everybody's uh, opinions and views on everything else. But when it comes to like, uh, let's say, uh, believing in the, in the most high and stuff like that, uh, people want to shun that. And then like, like it's been touched on, on, on several other things that, uh, people tend to think, oh, well, we'll, we'll just pick on the turn the other cheek guys. But like, like it's been talked on that, on, on this podcast that, uh, that's not always the, the case and people misinterpret that, but I've had situations, bro, and I never heard anybody speak on it. So I'll just I'll just drop a gem real quick. It's the, um, that there's been times that I know because it's happened to me, bro, and it's it's kind of a freaky tale because um, I've experienced it multiple times. The first time I started ever going to service, um, when I got introduced to um, to scriptures and stuff like that, um, I remember uh, I had a, a, a messed up ankle and I had to I had to use crutches. So when I was at my weakest and most vulnerable, I would say. Cause I was ripping and running uh, on the guys at the time. I'm doing a lot better now, positive wise. But at the time, I was always about being tip top shape. So when I started learning about scriptures, that's when I got attacked, bro. I started seeing shadows and freaking uh, in the middle of the summertime with the ventana open, bro. It's the, um, a big old like creepy, darker than like you've heard, darker than the room, that darker than the dark room, going out of freaking uh, curtain. And being attacked when I'm sleeping, so not only when I'm vulnerable physically, but also when I'm sleeping, I'm getting attacked. And in the middle of a deep sleep, the worst time that I got attacked, and I'm I'm going to be ending it pretty soon, but the worst time that I got attacked was um, I was sleeping, um, for whatever reason, I was sleeping on the ground. Like, I would like to sleep on the ground sometimes. And I woke up not being able to breathe. And not only that, bro, like, I felt like kind of like something was kind of like, creating pressure like on my throat so I wouldn't be able to breathe. Um, and then I try to get up and it felt like something on my on my right side, my stronger side, some something I felt like a pressure like somebody had two hands on my back just trying to uh keep me down so I wouldn't get up. And um uh, and immediately once I noticed what was happening, I was like, this, this is an attack, bro. So since I couldn't talk, I think that's the reason why I tried to take my voice away. I couldn't talk, so I couldn't defend myself as to um on that way and I couldn't get up. So I was trying to keep me down physically and, and without my voice. So immediately, uh, I skipped to the next best thing, which, which was, uh, praying to my mind. And once I, once I noticed what was going on, that's when I, I defended myself using palabra and stuff like that. And it went away, bro. So, uh, people can believe what they want, but if they give that, you know, God likes, God, God likes when you challenge them. So if you are ever, if you ever encounter a situation like that for anybody that's out there, just as to a peak game, give it a try because he, he likes a challenge, bro. 
Um, I'm, I, 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 I haven't been always uh, on that tip, but when I've gone through situations like that, bro, uh, witnessing people get healed and stuff like that, me being a, um, uh, me being a see it to believe it type of dude and, and, and experience what I've experienced, I can say that it, that it works, bro, because it worked for me. Okay. And it was a trip, bro. But uh, I, I'll, I'll leave you guys to it. Maybe somebody could touch upon that. But yeah. you guys have a good one, man. Take Thank you, man. Remember. Thank you. Yeah, but, I actually did touch on sleep paralysis. Yeah. But so, he's saying it's something else. He was just saying yeah, that he was attacked. Yeah. So it's, I get it because it does feel okay. like you're attacked. But, you know. Call her your name or where are you calling from? Call her your name. Hey, what's going on, man? This is Danny from West County. Um, you sound hey, a, a little muffled, my bro. Yeah, I have everything off, man. I'm sorry. I don't know if it's my phone. Or... Okay. okay. Uh, can you hear me, Tony? Yeah, I can hear you, but it just hear sounds me? like you have your phone, like your hand over your okay, phone. Okay, I apologize. Yeah, I know. I turned everything off. Okay, that's better. Yeah, hey, can. so the last caller that you had, man, um, <clears throat> I had the same experience. Everything okay. he said was kind of fucking on point. It's kind of weird. Okay. So, um, my thing was kind of weird because it was the same thing. I was crashed out in a room, and it felt like something heavy was on and it wouldn't fucking come off. It was weird. So whatever he said, it was kind of the same gig. So I don't know if you guys have ever experienced that. Uh, my, my Tia told me if there was ever like a uh, bad entity or like a bad, um, you know, bad energy, that you get up if you can, if you can talk, and cuss them out. I'm going to get the fuck out. So um, I tried to, but I couldn't. And then I did. And then, you know, like I said, it was gone. But everything that that man said, he, he's right, man. I've been through the same thing. So I don't know if you guys have done that or, or experienced that or know what that is, but something kind of iffy right there. Yeah. So Do you guys know what that is or have you guys ever experienced that? Or Yeah, that's the sleep paralysis. So um, I've, I've had is that. that what it is? Yeah, sleep paralysis. Um, so a lot of, a lot of people might okay. say that they feel like they're getting, like, how down and they can't right. get up. and that's what i mean when you are lucid dreaming so you're yeah so you're basically in a lucid dream state you're awake but your body's there but you're awake and you don't you're you can't okay. move because remember when we go to in to sleep when we sleep we're in a we you know what i mean we're basically in a lucid state so well, yeah exactly like so yeah, so it's basically you freaking out because you're really you're consciously knowing that you are you're not you you think you're asleep and it feels like you're getting way down, yeah. but you're actually awake outside of your body at that state of time and you're freaking out because your body you can't move it you're not in your body so you feels like what's right. holding me down what's yeah. it's sleep paralysis yeah okay so some right. people might say well go ahead no no I'm sorry. No, 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 I'm going to cut you off. I'm, I'm just, uh, okay, yeah, so some people might say it might feel like a demon holding them down or it's like an de- evil spirit, but it's just basically you freaking out because you don't really know what, you're not conscious enough to know what's actually happening. Right, okay. Right. Uh, l- l- let me just add a little something, okay? And uh, okay. I, I believe, my experience, and I've shared this before, I do believe that I was attacked. Right. But I was awake. Let me just give mm-hmm. you the, the example. Because one thing that everybody does say, it's like you could turn off the lights and whatever you see, it's darker than the actual dark room. Mine was the total opposite. Mm-hmm. Me and my sons, yeah. my, my two boys were sleeping next to me in one bed yeah. and I was on another bed. And uh, we were supposed to stay like at the embassy in Oxnard. We went to go see the Dallas Cowboys practice and they, they said they overbooked and they returned back my money. And I had to go find this old cheap motel because we were going to stay in the nice one. They overbooked. So we go to this hotel yeah. and I, I'm talking to them. I'm laying down. I said, okay, you guys, I'm about to go crash. Yeah. I turn off the lights. Okay. And I have my eyes open. And as I'm looking towards like the edge where my feet are at, Oh, I don't know why this guy hung up. Where my feet are, I actually saw something white hop on top of me. And my sons literally had to, whatever it was to wake me up somehow, but I was, I was awake and I couldn't move my mouth. Wow. Let let us get this phone call. Okay. Call her your name or where are you calling from? Yeah, it's Al, Albert. And I'm uh, from Houston, Texas. Albert from Houston, Texas. How are you tonight? I'm fantastic, man. Good, good, good. What's on your mind? 
Oh, well, I'm on live right now? Yes, yeah. sir. <laughs> yes, sir. You're live on Freaky oh, Tales. Oh, damn. Oh, shit. My bad. <laughs> um, I was just talk, uh, wanted to ask about the uh, paralysis or maybe if you guys think it has anything to do with, like, panic attacks or would you guys think that's something different? Um, uh, that I, I really don't know, bro. I've, I've, um, had sleep paralysis, which you explained to the T, mm -hmm. but I, that one experience where I said that I saw something, yeah, you know, actually hot, uh, jump, it was almost like they dove on me and they were sitting on my chest that were holding my, my, my mouth yeah. and I'm yelling like, mm, oh. and my sons hear it. They turn on the light and they see me wiggling with my eyes open and they actually had to like, I have to wake you up. Yeah. Even yeah. though my eyes were open. Now, now, I definitely know that there's there's definitely negative, you know, energy. Yeah. That, that you can go, like we we're talking about, you can shake somebody's hand. And feel it. Yeah, yeah. feel their energy. So in different rooms, they, they, they that's why they say not to ever wear, like, somebody else's jewelry. Because it's, like, spreading whatever. Mm. They say don't ever buy jewelry from, like, a pawn store. Because pawn shop. You never know who had you it. You never know what energy's left over on it. Wow. You're right. No, but as far as the sleep paralysis, that's one thing that a lot of people call here on you, Freaky Tales. You know what it is, too, is if you ever got into meditation, deep meditation. So when I started doing that, it freaked me out. And I told the, the person that was getting me into the meditation, I said, hey, that it really you know, it freaked the shit out of me. Yeah. So uh, she was like, don't even, that's going to happen. So as you start, if you know about lucid dreaming, that's when you start knowing that it gets into a whole different dynamic like if you ever watch that movie vanilla sky it like it's it's hard to understand though the vanilla sky you gotta i watched that movie like 30 times trying to understand it and i'm still barely learning how to understand that movie wow okay anything else you wanted to ask caller yeah um do you guys know anything about the gins the gins do you have a, a, yeah it's uh it has to do with islam you know what it's about it in the Quran. It's funny that you said that. Um, my attorney is actually a um, uh, he's a Muslim. Yeah, he's from, he's from I believe from Pakistan. He's a Muslim, and one day I spoke to him about Freaky Tales, the podcast, mm. and I thought we talked about negative energy, we talked about good energy, and then we also talked about evil spirits. And he said, "Oh, Jen, Jens, yeah. and I was like, w "What is that?" So he kind of broke it down to me, uh. but uh, I I only know very little of it from his perspective from what he told me yeah well what, 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 what did you have a question on in, in regards to the gins um well just speaking about that i feel like they might it might be them causing this harm to us to humans see uh you, you know what's a interesting topic on that right like like maybe with the christians they say it's the demons right the, this gin, and I, I think it goes back to just uh, just the energy. You know what I mean? There's okay. good energy, bad energy. There's uh, you, wait, caller. Uh, you, I don't believe in. That. Yeah, caller. I just had a quick question. Uh, the reason why I'm asking is because yeah. you were you are actually the very first person that has ever called in and has mentioned gins. Gins, yeah. Okay, so now I'm asking, how did you know about it? How did you find out? I've been on a spiritual journey since April. Okay. And how is that going for yeah, you? Yeah, I started following Islam. Oh, fantastic. Okay. We're going good. Everything I've ever wanted to, uh, any questions I've ever had about life, uh, I'm start. I'm starting to get the answers from the Quran. Okay. That's dope. That's dope. You know who I used to watch a lot? There's a guy named Ahmed Didat. He used to debate with people but mm -hmm. it was pretty dope but he got you know he's he's passed now but. okay okay yeah now now yeah. what is the it reason I brought them, yeah go ahead i'm sorry go ahead no they said you were gonna say i'm sorry you said um, the reason why you brought it up yeah the reason i brought it up is because um before i, I found islam i used to like believe in ghosts and stuff like that but now that i know about the jinns uh, I truly do believe that either we go to hell or heaven. I don't believe we can come back and, you know, just roam around or whatever, like lost souls or whatever. Um, I do believe that there is some sort of, it, it, well, from what I've heard, they're, um, they're just like us. They have options, free will. They can either 
do good or do bad. And I feel like the ones that do bad are the ones who let themselves be known. Okay. Okay. Cool. Because in the Quran, it says that we have free will. So, you know, there is hell is for humankind and the jinn. So. Yeah. And that's another that's, topic within uh, the zone, the free will. That's, that's a big topic. Like we could probably start yes, a whole uh, thing about this topic. Oh, yeah. I was actually thinking about calling in uh, for DJ Yella if uh, you plan on taking phone calls. No, I am. I am. Please call in tomorrow. It's tomorrow night? Tomorrow night at 7 o'clock. Oh, yes, sir. I'll, I'll definitely uh, try to make a phone call. All good, my brother. The only thing I ask you, and I ask you this respectfully, sir, and I know you, you wouldn't, but I just have to say this, that uh, I know uh, Yella is a professing Christian, mm -hmm. and uh, the, the only thing I ask people not, I'm not encouraging people to call in and try to debate. Yeah, yeah, no, don't get in. That's the only thing that I, I don't want, but you can ask oh, them whatever okay. you want. Oh, no, nah, it's all good. Then I, I probably won't be you know, <laughs> making the phone call. Hey, you can still be respectfully and yeah, maybe and ask, ask a question. Because you know what I mean? Everybody got questions. I respect. No, I, I, I would never be disrespectful. Though. That wasn't, I just would like to not have a debate. I think that's a negative, just a conversation. That's it. Okay. Well, if you just want to call in and ask a question, for an example, just for an example, why the Bible, why not the Quran? Hey, that's a good question. Yeah. You, that's fair enough. And yeah. then, you know what? I would like to see yeah. how he would answer that. Exactly. That would, that's a dope question, actually. Yeah. So, yeah. I'll save that one for you if you want to call in can tomorrow. I, can I answer that? Well, can I answer that? No, no, because we not, it, it, we're not, that's not freaky <laughs> tales. Save that for tomorrow. <laughs> Tomorrow's combo. Oh, okay, for sure. For sure. I got you. No problem. <laughs> okay, my brother. You stay blessed. Thank you. Okay, let's keep it pushing. But you know what? That's the kind of stuff that I like to ask, and it's not in a disrespectful way to a believer because I asked my last guest that I had a, mm -hmm. a biblical discussion with. He's a pastor. Yeah. And he gave his life to God in prison, in solitary. Yeah. So I asked him, you know, why not the Quran? Why not becoming a Buddhist, a Mormon, a Jehovah, or whatnot? And he gave his answer. So I have to respect that. Yeah, that's true. Call her your name, or where are you calling from? Spencer Baca from Sacramento. Hi, do Spencer Baca. Yeah. What up, Spencer? Good. This is my first time calling into Freaky Tales. I've never gotten through before, but I wanted to say before I go ahead, I wanted to say, um, I wanted to ask you just a few things, Tony, and I'll make it quick because I know tomorrow I will not be able to ask you because all my questions will be for uh, DJ Yella, and most of them will be religious. Okay. So I wanted to uh, ask you, Tony, um, first of all, um, I know you're having Yella on the podcast tomorrow, but do you ever plan on bringing MC Ren? MC Ren, we've been in contact with them about three years ago, and MC Ren just didn't want to do no interviews. That's it. The thing is, I don't like yeah, going... Ren, the thing yeah, is Ren that he... hasn't done an interview since the Straight Outta Compton movie came out in 2015. Right. I understand. But, Spencer, I, I respectfully ask you this. Try to keep these questions to pertaining to Freaky Tales. So... Okay. The second thing I wanted to ask you then is pertaining to Freaky Tales. Um, the second thing I wanted to ask you, and then I'll go to my last thing. Has there ever been a movie that... Uh, scared you so bad to the point where you can't watch it you have to turn it off uh growing up the exorcist yeah i remember you telling that story the exorcist i can i can i can for sure i can agree with that bro but um the last thing um do you ever get the feeling where when you're outside like i'm actually walking around at the park right now i just got off of work bro do you ever get that feeling where literally you hear a weird noise and then you freeze and startle but it's all in your head do you ever feel like people are haunting you or something like that for me i always hear noise behind me i i'll be honest with you uh -huh. the majority of the time when i'm by myself there's been times that i've been with people and i know something's behind me i i always turn around and the guy that you i'm usually i'm with they're like you okay and i'm like bro like there's something right there and they're like what and believe it or not, that's what encouraged me to start this podcast so that I can talk about things like this. Talk about stuff, yeah. So, yes, but I don't know about haunting, but I do believe whether people want to call it gin, evil spirits, bad energy, I do believe it does exist. Oh, yeah, definitely. 
Yeah. So yeah. I can agree with that. Before we hang this call up, let me share a little story with you, and it's pertaining kind of to freaky tales. Okay. So I wasn't born yet. I was born in 2004, and but um, and I mean the reason why you ask me if I call into the bathroom, call in, call in from the bathroom sometimes, is because I I do have a job and stuff and. But when I guess in 2001, my dad told me, like, he was in the bathtub one day, and there was no lightning or anything outside. Then he dried his hands, he made a phone call on the phone, and all of a sudden, the phone started um, moving and, like, electrocuting him. Do you think that's, like, paranormal shit or what? I don't know, bro. That was a different one, huh? Yeah, it's a little different. I'm going to have to really think about that one and maybe kind of get back to you next time. But, yeah, that's my best okay, answer. Well, anyway, thanks for taking my call. I'll call in tomorrow. All good. Thank you, my bro. Appreciate you. Okay, let's get, get going. We probably have about another 20 minutes. We're going to cut this about 930. On Friday, we'll do the full two hours. Keep in mind, I'm doing two a week. Hit the notification bell button as for you to be notified when we go live. Call it your name or where are you calling from? Hello, caller. Hey, man, it's Hector. Calling from Arizona. Hector from Arizona. How are you tonight? Pretty good, man. How about you? I'm doing pretty good, man. I'm glad you, you can call in and be a part of the show. I got Vince right here. We were talking about reptilians, underground cities, and symbolism. What up, Hector? Hey, how's it going, man? Hey, so I was calling back as a... Uh... I'll make this quick, man. You know, I was I was coming. I went to visit family in California, and I stopped by in the rest area, and I I fell asleep. And then when I, I like I fell asleep in my car, so when I I looked up in my like I think it was a dream, but when I looked up, I saw this woman in white, just like staring at me, you know. And then it woke me up, but it was like so realistic, you know. Yeah. Like it. Like, it got me thinking, like, whoa, what's, you know, that happened last week. Oh, damn. And this was a dream, or is this? It, you know, it, it, yeah, it was a dream, but it was so realistic that I just, you know, I was stopping the rest area, took a nap, and I got my seat back, and then I felt like that person was looking at me in the glass, and then when it got close to the glass, I woke up. Was it, was it like a negative feeling, or was it? Like, like what did yeah, you get out of like it? A, like it woke me up, you know. It woke me up. Okay. Uh, yeah. I mean, th now let me ask you this: Has there has this ever happened before, or was this the first time? Uh, this, I think this is the second time, man. Oh, okay. Okay, are you still there? Yeah, I'm still here. Okay. It was this was the second time. Now, in the dream, is it the same dream both times? Yeah, it's, well, the other time was actually in my house, and I was actually sleeping, and then something woke me up, and then when I looked to my left, there was like a, like, it look, it's like a woman all white, but then her face is black, you know what I mean? Mm. Like, you can't, you can't see her face, but you can see, like, the, like, the eyes, you know? Yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, I don't know, but do you, you ever look, look that up, like, what, what could be the meaning, or what it, what, what that could be? I mean, today we have technology, bro. You can actually no, I'm, even I'm Google. Probably, uh. Yeah, I'm probably going to start doing that, man. It's just, you know, I just, I just wanted to share that story with you guys, you know? Yeah. That's, that's no, I appreciate weird. it, man. Like, oh, yeah, no, that's interesting. Yeah, I never heard heard of that, somebody in white looking at you. Yeah. But, but I would suggest for you to actually, you know, research what that could be. Absolutely. I mean, because today we live in a generation of information, bro, where we got information at our fingertips. Definitely. And you could just start putting, I dreamt of a lady in white with a black face. Black, yeah. And just start start from right there. I'm sure somebody somewhere has had somewhat of an experience like that. Yep, similar. Yeah. Well, I would sure do that, guys. Well, I appreciate you guys for your time, man, and uh, yeah, I love your life, Tony. I'm always watching you. Thank you, my and, brother. Uh, you guys be safe, right? You yes, too, sir. man. Thank you for calling in. Yes, sir. Okay, you guys, we've got about 15 more minutes, so let's go ahead and get these phone calls in. Um, once again, uh, thank you, everybody who's become a member. I would like to encourage everybody to become a member. We will be dropping more content for our members only at, by the end of this week. Call it your name, and where are you calling from? Hello, Tony. Uh, this is um, 
Bosley from the Cosmos. Hey, how are you, Bosley? Bosley. I'm doing great. How are you? Doing pretty good, pretty good. You know what? Uh, you made it because we're we're about to close up shop in about 15 minutes, so you always call with a good one. Oh, that's great. Um, hello to your friend. Vince. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What up? What up? Hello, Bosley. Bosley, right? Yes. Yes. Mm-hmm. And hello to the chat. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, so I'm calling um, briefly for a few things. Um, sleep paralysis. Um, sleep paralysis can be caused by a few things. And most of the time, we want to think that it's a spirit where chances are sometimes with all this um, praying to uh, La Santa, um, there's a lot of people who are <clears throat> envious of others and they use La Santa and they attack. But I'm not going to make this about ghosts and say that sleep paralysis can only be caused by that. Actually, sleep paralysis, um, most of the time, it, um, it has to do with insulin resistant, resistance in the body. And it's time to go to a doctor and get it checked. It has to do with the bile in your gallbladder. And it has to do with all the um, intestine um, function- functionality in your stomach. And um, the reason why you experience um, sleep paralysis, you'll notice that you, you may have it in between 2, 45 a.m., 3, 315, 330, 345, uh, 4, up until 430. These are the chances where you're going to experience sleep paralysis um i would uh suggest to check both um to go to um a doctor first and check your insulin resistance if everything's good you can discard that most likely it, you know it it could be um some brujeria psychic attack sense but i would say chances are it has to do with your health and your immune system and it's got to be, it's time to check it. Hey, that's um, dope. I haven't heard when it comes to, that. Uh, I'm sorry, what was that? Oh, no, I said that's good information. I, I mean, that's something that I have yet yes. to hear. hear yes. But. yes, I mean, I would I would want to make it about ghosts, but it's not always about ghosts when it, uh, when it comes to sleep paralysis. Definitely. Hmm. Okay, and then... um. Uh, when it comes to reptilians, um, there used to be um, an underground city um, right there in Los Angeles that it was full of uh, reptilians, but now it's empty because those reptilians are out here. They're mm-hmm. among us. I can name you a few. Um, and um, the city where uh, the main one is under the sign of where it says Hollywood, and then there's another one um, nearby. It's called Lagarta. And Tony, what does Lagarta mean in English? Lagarta. Lagarta. I don't know. Lagarta. You got Lizard. me. What is it? Oh, you're you're right. Yeah. Yes, Lagarta means. La la. Okay. Oh God. Somewhere. Oh man. Lagarta. Yeah. I thought you said Lagarta. Yeah, so like the you. letter. Like yeah. so, La Garza, yes. Oh my God, we dropped a phone call. Yeah. Hey, that might that kind of does make sense over under the Hollywood sign. Right? Exactly, it would make sense because what you know about Hollywood. Exactly, caller, if you're there, please. Let's see, caller, you still there? Oh, great. Hello. You try to say that. Yes. Go for it. I'm Keep, here. Yes, go. Hello. Okay, so she tried to say that the tattoo. She's got several of the tattoos, but one of them really caught my attention. And it's an, it looks like a, a, a fat alligator standing up. And if you really look at it closely with the loop, it has scales. Mm. It, that's the sign of a reptilian. Um, and she also has a reptilian in her page, which may seem, may seem like a demon, but it's a reptilian. Who, who is this? Also, um, Doja Cat. Oh, oh, you Doja. know what? They've been and she she does 
put that in her videos too. Yeah. So I don't. Yeah. So that does kind of make well, sense what she's saying. But I'm not, yes, and but I'm not saying that all repellents are bad, but it, you you do have to uh, be kind of careful because um, California is the city of repellents. Um, actually, um, the the song Hotel of California is talking about that. Uh, one of these days I could decode it for you. I don't want to make this uh, call too long. But um, um, Richard Ramirez, um, he wasn't a reptilian, but he was possessed by a reptilian. And they had to capture him because he he was in ground, not too, not too good ground that he got possessed. And this is why he did what he did. And this I heard from one of the detectives. I know he had two detectives. One that wrote, wrote a book and the other one did do conferences. I heard that one. I can't remember his name. But he did explain all of that about um, Richard Ramirez getting possessed by a reptilian. Hmm. And um, another reptilian um, actually... This country is being run by reptilians. They're all in the Pentagon. Um, they're all in the White House. One of them uh, uh, is Nancy Pelosi. She uh, admitted, she says, I'm not no baby, but I am a reptilian. Um, she was and, quoted uh, for saying that. Oh, was she? Yeah, she was. Okay. Some people have told me, and I don't know if this is true, but some people have told me that Obama's a reptilian. Uh, and some people have said yes, a Beyonce. So I never heard that Obama was. I heard Obama's girl was something. <laughs> yeah, yeah. My <laughs> bad, but it's a different. Has a different. Nah, but uh, uh. But we're not gonna. Do it. No, they they always say what's the uh the the uh, Queen Elizabeth girl. The... Yeah, yeah, I know you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. they. Uh, as a matter of fact, Queen Elizabeth, she is a reptilian. They're known as blue blood reptilians. She only has one eye. Actually, she's the one who owns the $1 bill. And if you guys get a loop and pull out a dollar, look at the um, uh, the little triangle where the eye is inside. Around the eye, there's scales. And that represents the uh, the eye of a reptilian, the blue blood reptilians in the royalty. They're, wow. all, they're all reptilians. Bosley. <sighs> Yes. What's it going to take for me to get you in here so we can talk about this? <laughs> and talk about some reptilians, huh? <laughs> Bosley seems like she. I, 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 I don't know if you. Morning. I don't know if you you don't you follow me on yes. Instagram, but if you do or if not, uh, uh, email me at freakatellspodcast at gmail .com. I would like to get you in here so we can talk about this. This is very very interesting. Yeah. Uh, um, the reason why I name myself the uh, Bosley. The bossy of the cosmos is because, okay, my name and my face doesn't matter. It is the message is in the knowledge that I love to pass to other people, and um, I love your your shows, your podcasts, and when you answer and you say, "Color who you are and where you're calling from," it is it's, it's just an amazing feeling. So thank you for the invitation. I really think about it. But for now, if it's okay that I continue just on making these brief phone calls in That's the fine. meantime, but uh, thank you so much for the the invitation. I feel flattered. All good, all good, caller. Thank you, greatly appreciate you, Bosley. Awesome. Yeah, Bosley, appreciate you calling awesome. in and enlightening cool. us on this uh, topic here. Yeah, absolutely. Awesome. Thank you so much, you guys. Have You're very welcome night. too. Okay, we'll good take night. good night. We're going to take one more phone call, and then we're going to call it a night. Okay, so who's going to get the last phone call? Here we go. Caller, your name, and where are you calling from? Tony A., Caesar from Paris. Caesar from Paris. Where you been, my brother? Man, I'm here on the sideline, not missing not one bit, not one show ever, Tony A. I'm always on here, on your side, Rodeo and Radio, Rodeo and Rodeo. And just, you know, the, the sheriff, from New, from, sheriff from Riverside got me, you know, laying low. So that's what I'm doing. But I'm here. I haven't left Tony A, and we're still we're still kicking it going, man. That's right. Let's keep it going, brother. Did you have anything you want to share? No. Question, complain? Yes, I do. I got I got three. I got a couple of three things I want to I want to say. Um, I've been uh, trying to call you, and I've been listening to you at the same time. And and I heard you mention that something was creeping up behind you. Yes. Um, 
this happened to me during the daytime, Tony. A. During the daytime, um, and I got real animosity against this thing that got me slipping, Tony. A. Hey, oh, oh, also, I want to say, uh, what's up to uh, your co your host? Yo, yo, uh, Vince, what up, man? I doing one of the Yeah, yeah. Um, this 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 thing, spirit. I don't know what spirit or not. It was in the daytime. I was home by myself. This thing made a knock at the door, so I could go to the door. And while I was opening the door, this motherfucker came from behind me and he scared me. You know, and when he scared me. You know, you get that, you get that, I come on, you know, you get that, that, uh, that, that jolt of adrenaline. Yes. Right, Tony. Right the millisecond I felt like that, I felt this thing drain that, that energy that I let go of the scare. If, if that, if I'm saying that right. Yeah. That energy that I let go, that at that point, it sucked it out of me. And I felt, I felt violated, bro. I felt like, I because it's a puta madre. It got me. Damn. And I got so pissed because I felt I knew what it did. And and it fed off of me. It fed off of that energy. I'm saying that to say this. A lot of people don't understand what and who we truly are. We are very, very special beings. We're full of energy. We're full of and people call it emotion, but it's the energy that we have. And unfortunately, Nobody has ever taught us how to use our bl- our brain completely, Tony A. Mm-hmm. Hey, you Sleep know what? paralysis, all this other stuff. First of all, you're not gonna your dreams are not gonna be good if your brain is not good. If you're smoking weed, or if you're drinking Tony A, or if you're smoking anything, taking pills, your brain is not your brain is not sound. It's not healthy. So when you dream, you dream in stages. You know, the and- more pure your brain is the harder you go further into your dreams. That's why sometimes you can see into, quote-unquote, the future or whatnot. I believe you know, that. Sometimes <clears throat> I go along my whole week, and I meet people, and I do things, and all of a sudden I have a remix dream of everything that I've, that I've done that whole that past week. Mm. Now, I, I believe that we are very much more, people got to listen, we are more special than, because they haven't taught us shit. Tony at school, they don't teach us nothing about ourselves. Right. They're too busy teaching us bullshit about everything else. Nothing ever about ourselves. You can forget about the religious stuff. Don't get me started on that. That's just a bunch of cock of shit. You know what I mean? And that's from personal experience. Teacher yeah. from Paris will tell you that. Guaranteed. Yes. Now, we and 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 I, and, I, and, I, and unfortunately, we're old enough now to to get a grasp or to start thinking. But unfortunately, it's too late because who's going to teach us how to how to train our brain? I told you a story on another uh, freaky tale how I seen this being in front of my house, and I was parked in my in my driveway. Yes, I remember. And when I made contact with them, you remember that, Tony? Yes. Okay. When, when in, in that time, when I was in my car looking at this thing, I spoke in my mind. I spoke on my mind. What the fuck? And that thing heard me, and he saw me. So it's it's a thing that we we're, we're more telepathical, and we're hell of a lot more smarter than what they're telling us. I agree with you. Because they ain't teaching us shit. They right. ain't teaching us shit. And unfortunately, that's where we're at right now. But fortunately, we could teach the youth. We could teach the the we could we could teach the people that the doctors that say that these kids are on AHDH or ADHD or that they're dumb and retarded. And what do they do? They give them riddling pills, and they give them pills to shorten them out, to slow them down, when really their brains are so fast and advanced. They don't want these kids to learn how to use their brains like that, Tony. Yeah. They got us dumbed down. They got us dumbed down. They got us, as a matter of fact, what's going to happen tomorrow with that thing going on? We don't know. Oh, with the uh, yeah, phone. I'll tell you one thing. Cesar uh, from Paris ain't going to sit there for 30 minutes and let some beeping thing go through my phone. Right. And, do, and does uh, who know what to our brain, to our senses, to yeah. our to our frequency. Yeah. Frequency. I don't even know how to say it in Spanish. In Spanish frequencia. Whatever you want to call it. We yeah. got to be careful. The future is doomed. We're going to hell in a basket, Tony. A. I'm sorry to keep up so much time, but God damn it, it feels good to be back on the air. See you from Paris. I love you guys. Vince, you had a yeah. good show. Tony, A, I'm going to be calling in a lot more sooner. Absolutely. Hey, I love you guys. Hey, shout out to you, Caesar. Caesar Appreciate it, man. And I'm out. And yeah. he's out, yeah. Thank you for that. Let me go ahead and uh, we can. 
um, log off of here. Um, so far, how did you like the show? It was dope, man. Uh, it's, dope. it's very, very different. And, you know, people call in with their personal experiences, with their opinions, with I their... I like it, man, because it's... <laughs> their facts, you know yeah, what I'm saying? It's, it's people have different... Uh, Different ways of seeing different things. Yes, bro. definitely, definitely. So, and that's a good thing, and that's why we can take these off now. Okay. <clears throat> I like to pr provide a platform so that people can Give call in talk. and just share what the you know. I mean, people may say they're being attacked, demonic possession. You may say, you know, it's just sleep paralysis, lucid dreams. The lady says, might have been something you ate. They're saying, yeah, something. You know what I'm like saying? Physically within you that you're eating. Yeah. And that's one thing that I I like is that. We're not trying to debate with anybody. We're not trying to argue with anybody. We just want you to be yourself and to share your experiences. So once again, other than that, uh, Vince, anything I didn't ask you, anything you wanted to bring up? If not, let's give a no, shout out. I, I think you had a great, great people that called in. Um, they were kind of informing us. On, on yeah, absolutely. Stuff, right. So I'm open to different, different topics. I like, I just like expanding your mind. Absolutely. So if we can expand your mind or expand our minds together. That's dope. Any shout outs or? Yeah, man. Shout out to you for bringing me on. Shout out to all the people that are tuned in right now, watching and sharing their stories. Um, anybody that's supporting you, shout out to all of them. Absolutely. We're going to go ahead and put his uh, uh, Instagram on the description so you guys can follow him directly. Um, other than that, let me go ahead and give my shout outs. First and foremost, I want to sh shout out uh, my team, Alex Cervantes, Cervantes Enterprise, uh, Norbert News for Norbies, my son, uh, B Scandalous, and the Hip Hop Jedi, and our moderator, once again, Magic Girl. Everybody knows who she is. Um, I want to thank everybody on the live chat. I want to thank everybody uh, who didn't want to be on the live chat, who just sat at home and watched. I want to thank all our subscribers because, once again, if it's, if it's not for you, you know what? I wouldn't be here. You guys make this platform. So I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart. Thank you guys for always supporting me. Uh, once again, the membership is open. You only pay one time a month and I release every week content this week. Well, I'm going to release a little bit more content. We just recently started it. So other than that, do we have anything? Okay. Okay. Vince, thank you once again. Uh, let's give a shout out to Mike Santana. Oh yeah, that's, that's what I was about. To, I was about to tap you say, yo, shout out to Mike Santana. Absolutely. Kind of bringing us, re reconnecting yeah. us. Uh, my boy, Brian. Uh, man, I know there's a whole bunch of people. Shout out to Magic Girl. Shout out to you. Yeah. Um, anybody that's working, anybody that's just messing with me, fucking with me, shout yeah. out to you. Absolutely. So once again, much love and respect to all of you guys. Uh, see you guys tomorrow on my other podcast, DJ Yella with Bible Talk. And then on Friday, I'll be back with Freaky Tales. So make sure you guys like, comment, subscribe, and share. Follow us on Freaky Tales Podcast on Instagram. And we are out of here. Thank you. Yeah.